Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using this pretty postage stamp and die. I also use this little XOXO stamp and die. And then I showed you the stacking hearts, but I didn't use them. I used these pierced heart dies. And then I thought I was going to use the balloons from Loads of Love, um, but didn't end up using them. And then this one's called Love Enclosed. I have the dies for them, but I couldn't find them. And after trying to find them for quite some time, I just gave up and decided that I would fussy cut them. <laughs> so here for the background, just to make it a little bit more, you guys know, I, I always say that it's more interesting. It's more interesting, but that's the truth of it. Like sometimes you just don't want a plain white background. You just want a little something extra. And so I took the large XOXO stamp I'm going to stamp it down in our brilliant white pigment ink, and then I'm going to heat emboss it with, um, you could use white, you could use clear because it's on white cardstock, but I chose the um, satin pearl, which is just like a little bit extra um, because that's how I like my cards sometimes is just a little bit extra. So basically I put this in my Misty and then I alternated it. You should clean it in between. I didn't. Um, that's just, I'm just letting you know, you should clean it so that you don't accidentally get ink where you don't want it. I did not do that. Um, but I did take it off and then flip it over. You could also do this without your Misty and just um, stamp it. And I went back and forth about whether or not to do that. And I was worried I wouldn't be able to line it up. And so that's why I chose to do it in my Misty. I'm going to work this all the way up to the top of the card. And then, um, but I will tell you that I I wish I would have um, done like stamped two and then heat embossed them just to make sure that I got really good coverage. The one on the bottom, I did end up having to go back and restamp because by the time that I got to it, for as long as it took me to get all the way to the top, um, that ink was drier than I would have liked. So I did have to go back and restamp it just to get uh, as much coverage as I wanted. I'm just trying to be transparent about the way that things worked out. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I used this white pearl embossing powder and then I went ahead and heat set that. This one is, it's white, but it just has like a little extra shimmer to it. Um, but the, I mean, the white would have been completely fine for what I want it for, which is to do um, a little bit of an emboss resist in the background uh, so that you can actually see it. Not that you can't see it with the white pearl, you can, like clearly you'll be able to see it here. Um, but so I also pulled out a piece of um, coral colored cardstock and used the, it wasn't the largest, I think it was the medium, the middle uh, pierced die. And this puts little like little pierced holes around the edges. And since I knew you were only going to see just a little bit of this heart, I chose this one because I liked the decorative edge. So I used Tombow Mana Multi Glue in the back of it so that it would be repositionable so that I could just hold it in place uh, while I did some ink blending. And again, I just wanted this to be super soft. And because I wanted it to be super soft, I opted to use the blending brush instead of the foams. Normally, I like the foams better because I feel like they put down more ink quicker and I like a bold background. Like that's me. I like bright colors. We're going to talk about the color scheme. Um, but when you want something to be soft, the brushes are super nice because they blend a lot smoother and it's easier to get a softer transition into white. So the color that I chose is saltwater taffy. I did this as a Valentine's Day theme because that's just the season that we're in. But you could very easily swap out this heart for a circle die and do the same exact layout with this and just have a really pretty card to send to a crafty friend. Um, but anywho, so let's talk about the color scheme. I, like many people, kind of get stuck in a rut on you, what color schemes that I use. And I know that. I know that about myself and I'm fine with it. Here, I just wanted to remove this because obviously I'm going to tear it down permanently later, but it does act as a mask. And you can see that even though it looks super soft next to this like bright coral color, um, we actually did put down quite a bit of ink. And now we're going to move on to the stamping portion.
because I am going to be coloring with my alcohol markers, I'm going to stamp this down in our intense black um, from Honeybee because it is safe to use with alcohol markers. Um, you could, you know, use whatever you have on hand that's safe for whatever medium that you're using. So the color scheme that I chose, like I said, I know that I get stuck in them. I know that I gravitate more towards pinks versus reds. I know that I gravitate um, more towards like purples. Um, like those are just not that I love purple. I really don't, but it's a nice compliment to pink. Um, I do have a tendency to bit to use a bit of orange, but not so much a peach. So recently in scrolling, which is great, like it's awesome when you find inspiration from different things. So mine was kind of like twofold. I had somebody send me a Christmas card, um, and it actually might have been Linda that was like a mistletoe but it was done in like a teal blue and like a darker blue and I totally loved it I thought it was super pretty and then um I had I saw another card which I believe it was from Shannon that like did a navy blue with like some peaches and I was like this is br I really love this so here what you're seeing is you probably saw this footage before in the last video that I did for Honeybee because this is the watercolor background that I made for the um, Fluttering Hearts cover plate and I put it back in here just in case you are you know a person who didn't see the other video or maybe you know the other video wasn't for you um, but this is the hearts that I used so when I tell you guys like I save the hearts to use on other projects that's not a lie I really do I leave them in my little cup and then when it's make sense to use them than I do. So this is how I created the background um, with lots of, you know, distress ink watercolories. And then I added some shimmers and then I die cut it out of the fluttering hearts. If you did not see the video where I used the actual cover plate, um, I will link that at the end. Uh, but this is how I got the hearts that I put on my card. <laughs> um, but anywho, so I saw that the, you know, these two different things and I was really liking the way that they looked. And, um, then I was like, okay, what if I did blue and like this peachy color and like a coral because it's a split complement. Now, what does that mean? It means on the color wheel, you have your main color. For us, it's going to be blue. Okay. And then from there, instead of going directly across to its complement, which is orange, you would go to the left of orange and to the right, which would give you red and red orange. Like that's how the split complement would look on the color wheel. And I think a lot of times people get sucked into thinking that that means, um, you know, that it has to be this true shade of blue. It has to be a true red. It has to be a true orange. But it doesn't. It does not. It just means that you're using colors that are in that wheelhouse. So you could use anything from a bright blue to a baby blue to a navy blue, which is obviously what I chose was navy blue. And then in the orange section, you know, you can choose like a pumpkin color, you can choose a rust color, or you can choose a peach, which is what I chose. For the reds, the reds run the gamut. So you have... um more of a blue-based red, which looks like they're more on the purple side. Um, they're a little bit deeper. Or you have like a tomato-based red, which is a little bit more on the orange side. And you have everything in between. And so for the red, I chose a coral, which is, you know, a little bit on the lighter side. And so because of that split complementary color scheme, all of these things work really nice together. So you don't, you're not limited to the color palette that I chose. You could do any split complement um, and you should get a nice result. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind if you struggle with knowing how to pick color palettes or how to um, kind of maybe break out of the box like I was trying to do, you know, because I was tired of making the, the same old, same old. 
Because, I mean, like, I love my rainbows, don't get me wrong, but I can't do a rainbow card for every card that I make. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and the same thing with the I love a, a pink, orange, yellow combination. Um, but I can't do that on every card. So in order to kind of, like, break out of the box and find some maybe other things that I like that maybe I could incorporate into, um, you know, my, my repertoire, if you will, uh, for a... Um, a different look when I'm, you know, maybe that's something I can just work in and make it part of my, you know, more normal. But I thought that it worked really well for this one. So for the peach combination, I chose a YR00, a 02, and then an R05. Um, that's going to be my darkest color. And then I just picked some of these little um, leaves that were in there to color. If you were looking at the gallon, gallon pint quart rule, this would definitely be my um my my littlest amount my because I didn't use it very much I used it as an accent color um and then the other thing is don't forget when you're picking out your color palette so you can use as many neutrals as you want like the majority of this envelope ends up being white or gray if you will um because I'm adding little-ish amounts of other colors. But the main portion of the card actually ends up being quite a bit of white, which is a neutral, and that's totally fine. So, um, yeah, those are just my thoughts on that. I hope that hopefully that is helpful to you in, you know, you picking out your own color schemes. Um, and then, you know, if you're if you still are like, I don't understand what she's saying, Google it. Just Google split complementary palette and it will show you a color wheel um with the it's basically a triangle that it'll show you the the triangle and what other options there are, and there's tons for um a split complement. So for the um, I think they're, they look kind of like poppies to me. I'm not 100% sure what they are. These cute little, like, cupped flowers. Um, I did go with a, it's a different red than I normally use. Like, the combination is different than I normally use. Because uh, the one that I use is the more purple-based. Um, but this one's just a little bit softer, and it's the 20s family. And it's one of the first ones, um, actually, that I ever purchased. Um, because it came from, um, Jennifer McGuire's recommendation. She is, a an R20s family. And then once I purchased that, I realized that I really liked much brighter colors than Jennifer did, which is fine. Um, and then so I ended up going back and picking up some other ones that would be a bit, uh, brighter. And then I, like I said, prefer the ones on the purple side. So, anywho, what's been going on in our life? We've just been, just been living, just been living the dream, living life. Um, it's funny, my husband made the comment to me yesterday that, like, because we hosted, his cousin uh, lives out of state within driving distance, and just, they very generously drove up here to see us. We were actually supposed to do it before Christmas, and uh, their, their children got sick, and then the weather, and it just didn't work out, so we ended up doing it. Um this past weekend. And it was super nice to see them. And it was very nice of them to drive up and see us. Um, but because of that, like they were getting here at, I think like 11 o'clock, 11, 1130. And so both of us got up early and then just, you know, hit the ground running. And he had made the comment, you know, that he's more used to doing that than I am, which I thought was really interesting because, um, I can't remember a morning that I didn't get out of bed and hit the ground running since I had my children. Uh, but I, I think his point was, is that I'm definitely more of a evening person and not a morning person, which is true. I have adapted because that's what my lifestyle requires um, to getting up earlier than maybe I would have preferred because I've been a night shift, you know, for a long time. And I'm a night person. Like when I, when my babies are grown and I'm retired, I will probably be, you know, back to being up till two o'clock in the morning. Um, and honestly, on the nights that I have the opportunity to stay up because the next day is my day to sleep in, because you guys know how we split it. Um, I do stay up late. 
when everybody else is sleeping and I'm by myself <laughs> and I'm by myself, mama gets to be alone and do something that, um, doesn't require her to be responsible for, uh, which I think all parents need, not just moms. Like if you're, you know, every, everybody needs a break sometimes. So I am, I have adapted to a day shift schedule because, um, that is when I have the ability to work because my children are typically out of the house. Now that doesn't always work out. Like we have Martin Luther King Day coming up. So Pina does not have any school. And um, so he'll be home with me and we'll be hanging out. Um, and that's, I'm not mad about that. That's great. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to um, work from home, you know? So but I do think it's interesting. So my husband, when I met him, he was like a middle of the road person. Like he wanted to be a night person, but he just didn't have it in him. So he was like a, a midnight 1 a.m. kind of person, whereas I was like a 3 a.m. kind of person. Like there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Here, I'm just adding some details, um, using some white gel pen into the stamen area of those flowers to just make them pop. And then I'm going to go ahead and die cut that out. Uh, and then I will be, like I said, I couldn't find my dies and I got tired of looking. So I will be fussy cutting out my little envelopes, um, that are up there. So, um, yeah, he was like a, a middle of the road. Like I want to be a night person, but I can't quite do it. And now that he's been working, um, a more consistent schedule, like, cause before he was on the same shift, but like, if you had overtime, you would either have to go in early or stay late. Like he has much more control over his schedule in this current position, which is amazing, which is such a blessing to us right now with our children being young. Um, but I also have adjusted into being a day shift person. And I just think it's wild, like how your body can just completely adapt to that, even knowing that my preference is middle of the night. So when I was young, when I was little, my mom, um, I always knew my mom to go to bed super early because, so my mom was a stay at home mom until I was in like sixth grade. Here, let's just talk about this uh, sentiment real quick. So I'm stamping this down. I'm stamping it down in black. I know that it's going to go right through that little line um, and make it a little bit harder to read. Again, if I would have had found my dies, I would have die cut it out and it would not have been an issue. But because I don't have the dies, I'm going to do something else to fix it. So I stamped that down and now I'm going to go in with a white gel pen and I'm going to just outline the entire word. Um... And this is going to break that line to make my little happy mail uh, much more legible. After that, I will go in with a black pen and just kind of fix up any areas that maybe I messed up. You could also restamp it and get a good result um, while keeping that white outline intact. So if you're a person who isn't confident in your pen skills, don't worry about it. Just um, just restamp it. Uh, so anyway... So growing up, my mom was a stay-at-home mom and, um, like, I never knew, like, is she, she, was she a morning person? Was she a night person? I had no idea because I had a bedtime. Um, but then when I got a little bit older, like when I was conscious enough of when somebody was going to bed, my mom went to bed super early. Like she went to bed crazy early. Like we're talking like seven o'clock in the summer. My mom was going to bed when the sun was still up. Um, you know, my dad would always be like, be quiet. Your mother's sleeping. Your mother's sleeping. Why is my mother sleeping? My mother's sleeping because my mother had to get up at like four o'clock in the morning in order to get ready and get to work. And my mom did like, I, I've told you guys before, I come from a blue collar family. Here, we got to go back to the card. So here I adhered that little blue envelope because I had no idea what I was doing. And um, that blue envelope does not belong there because it's not low enough to be seen. So when I go to put my my little floral envelope on top of there, I'm going to completely cover it up. Um, so I'm going to have to remove it and then re, uh, re-glue it, re-adhere it. So anyway... Um, she 
got up. She went, she worked at Ford Motor Company. My mother worked in the foundry. She slung engine blocks. She um, probably had bigger muscles than, than most guys that I knew. Like my mom worked. She, you want to talk about sweat equity. Like my mother worked. Um, and that's where she stayed until she retired. Um, and, you know, and she still did everything else too. Let's be real. Like it was a different time back then. She still cooked dinner. She still did all of our laundry. She still listened to us run our mouths because we were ungrateful children. Um, like she still did all of those things as well. Like she's amazing. St nothing's changed. She is still amazing. Um, but anyway, it wasn't until years later that like I became more of a like older teenager or an adult that I learned that my mother's actually a night person. That's it. Like she is a night person. She prefers to be up in the night. Um, but I had no idea because she had been working the day shift job for five ever and getting up at four o'clock in the morning. And her response was always, well, like I did it for you guys. I did it so I could, you know, be home when you guys got home from school. I did it so that I would be able to see you more consistently. Like those are the choices that my mom made so that she would be able to be home for her family. And because of that, I also make the same choices. So yes, I would prefer to stay up all night and do my work then, but I don't, I get up. Um, because it means that I can see my kids. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, it's just interesting how your body works and can can change the ad over to make you from a night person to a day person. So anyway, that is the whole card. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something and you're inspired to maybe put your own spin on it and look into that split compliment. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.